Hey, welcome back. We're in the book of Exodus. And today we're just going to again go back to just one verse, and that'll be chapter 10, verse 7. Uh, Moses and Aaron have delivered their uh, latest ultimatum. You haven't let the people go. Now here's going to come a plague of locusts. And now as soon as they leave the room, we get this verse 7, the response of the people in Pharaoh's court. And here's what verse 7 says. Pharaoh's servants said to him, How long will this man be a snare to us? Let the men go that they may serve the Lord their God. Do you not realize that Egypt is destroyed? So after Moses leaves, Pharaoh's advisors swing into action. They can't believe what they just heard. No, not a locust plague, not that, anything but that. How long, they ask? Who are they asking? They're asking Pharaoh. How long will this man be a snare to us? Well, how, when are you going to When are you going to get some clue? When are you going to fix this? When are you going to solve this and just back off and let these people go? They feel trapped. They feel caged. Their gods have been utterly powerless, and God's, uh, the, the Hebrews' God has been utterly powerful. And so, yeah, th this, this is a cultural collision, a societal collision. The whole civilization of Egypt is, is dangling in the wind here. It's hanging in the balance. What's going to happen? Hey, Pharaoh, change your approach at this point. And, you know, the advisors must at this point be thinking in terms of damage control. Uh, the nation is pretty much wrecked, uh, but what we can do is we can save what's left. But Pharaoh has to relent, and so far we, have, we haven't seen a lot of that, have we? So the only logical thing to do at this point is to surrender, cave in, give them what they want, let them go. In fact, get them far away would probably be a pretty good plan. Things are not working out too well. God's people, as we've noticed before, God's people are too hot to handle. Not because they're too hot to handle, but because God, the God of heaven and earth, he's too hot to handle. He is hot to the touch. You have to uh, you have to remember, you're the creature. He is the creator. The best approach is a lot, of, a lot of humility. The difference, the gap between you and the infinite God is, I guess, infinite. So there's a big difference there, and it's our part to say, yes, sir. Even though we know he's in a benevolent God, he loves us. He has thoughts of future, to give us a future and hope that he thinks toward us, as Jeremiah what 29, 11, uh, commonly memorized Bible verse, reminds us. That's, he, he has a positive approach to us. Luke 12, 32, it is, uh, fear not, little flock, it is my good pleasure to give you the kingdom. God is wanting us in the kingdom. But here he's making kind of an object case on the Egyptians and their crazy God system. And so, yeah, it's time to sort of get this sorted out. And the, the advisors of Pharaoh are now openly, actively urging him to change his approach. Uh, this, this is not something, if you look back at everything else we've seen in the book of Exodus, and anywhere else in the Bible, this was never the approach. You never approach Pharaoh this way. Uh, Pharaoh is one that you, uh, but these guys are, are urgent. They are frantic because they've already seen the power of God. It's interesting that in our world today, if people could see the power of God like the advisors of Pharaoh saw him, it, it would be interesting how our world would be today. But people don't see that. People are oblivious. And so in our day, those that are opposing God have no fragment of inclination about uh, in understanding of what the power of this God is, the power of the God that you and I serve. But the advisors of Pharaoh are uh, frantic at this point, and they're urging Pharaoh to take a different line. Friends, I'm pretty convinced that at this point in that room, every single person knew the right thing to do was to go ahead and let the Hebrews go. I think Pharaoh knew it. But he was just too stubborn and filled with pride to uh, let them go. So here we have it. The deadlock continues, and Egypt is in for uh, even more crunching. So oh, it, the leadership you have is so important, and leadership in a church, leadership in a nation. This is not going to end well for Egypt, but we're going to have now plague number eight. See you tomorrow morning, and let's find out about uh, how it goes with the locust party.